In previous videos on RAND index, I've explained the concepts and provided examples of how the RAND index is used to evaluate clustering outcomes. In this video, we'll take a practical approach. I'll guide you through writing a Python program that implements the RAND index. I am defining the function RAND index first. This function takes two arguments, result, or the output from the clustering algorithm, and GT, the ground truth labels for the data. Both the parameters are list variables containing cluster labels. Obviously, the number of elements in each list should be the same, which is equal to the number of data points or rows the original data has. I initialize four variables, tp, tn, fp, fn to zero. These variables will hold the counts of true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives, respectively. The function then enters a pair of nested loops, which iterate over each unique pair of elements in the result list. Inside the inner loop, it checks whether the labels for each result pair are the same by result i equals result j comparison. If they are, it means the corresponding pair of data points are in the same cluster and hence considered a positive pair. If the corresponding labels in the ground truth are also the same, that is GTI is equal to GTJ, then this is a true positive situation and TP is incremented. If the corresponding labels in the ground truth are different, this is a false positive situation and FP is incremented. If the labels for each pair are not the same, that is the pair is a negative pair, it means the samples are in different clusters. If the corresponding labels in the ground truth are the same, then this is a false negative situation and Fn is incremented. If the corresponding labels in the ground truth are different, this is a true negative situation and Tn is incremented. After all the pairs have been evaluated, the RAND index is calculated as Tp plus Tn divided by Tp plus Tn plus Fp plus Fn, as we learned in the previous video. The RAND index function then returns the calculated RAND index. To quickly test the RAND index function, let us create two lists of equal lengths, one representing the clustering assignments coming from a clustering algorithm, and the other representing the ground truth labels. This is relevant to one of the examples that we used in the previous RAND index video. I'm now calling the RAND index function we have written today with these two lists as arguments. I'm printing the returned value. Running the code, we see that the RAND index between the clustering result and the ground truth is 0 0.8. I am making some changes to the ground truth labels. Note from the previous discussion of RAND index. Now the clustering result is completely agreeing with the ground truth, even though cluster labels are different index-wise in clustering outcome and ground truth. If it is not clear why these two lists are in agreement in terms of the clustering concept, please revisit my earlier videos on RAND index. For these two lists, the RAND index should be 1. Running the code, we see that RAND index is 1. In practice, we will have real data, so I will now change the code so that you have a full sample of how you can apply the RAND index in a more realistic situation. In the main area of the code, we create a list named raw data that represents our data points. Ideally, you will read the raw data matrix from a file. You start by importing numpy and k-means from sklearn.cluster. NumPy is a library for the Python programming language, adding support for large multidimensional arrays and matrices, along with a large collection of high-level mathematical functions. As discussed in the past, k-means is a popular clustering algorithm from the scikit-learn library. We convert this raw data list into a NumPy array using np.array. We will feed the NumPy data to scikit-learn's k-means algorithm. We set k to 3 indicating that we want to form three clusters from our data. We create a k-means object with an underscore clusters equals k and fit our data to it using the fit method. The labels underscore attribute of the fitted model gives us the labels of each data point resulting from the k-means algorithm. The true labels or ground truths for each point are specified in the ground truth list. We are assuming that it is already available as supervision, as RAND index computation requires labels from the clustering algorithm and the ground truth labels. The clustering result and ground truth are printed out. 
We call the rand index function with clustering outcome and ground truth as arguments and store the returned rand index value in the variable named rand. Finally, we print out rand. This code in essence demonstrates how to perform k-means clustering on a dataset and then evaluate the quality of the clustering using the rand index. The rand index gives a measure of the similarity between the predicted clustering and the true clustering. It's a useful tool for assessing the performance of clustering algorithms. A rand index value of 1.0 refers to a complete match of clustering with ground truth. Lesser rand index values would indicate a lesser match of the clustering outcome with the ground truth labels. Using this code, you can play with different ground truth labels and change the data points to study the behavior of the rand index in terms of clustering evaluation. If you liked the video, then please press the like button. If you did not like it, well, what can I say? Then subscribe to this channel so that you can like a future video. This is a video made by Dr. Shahrir Hossein. It is narrated by Dr. Hossein's AI clone, which sounds better than Dr. Hossein's original voice.